Thank you very much for watching my film. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming it. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It makes a massive difference to me and it really does help me out. And plus, it means that you won't miss a single film that I bring out. And I bring one out every single month. So I got to Malaig about lunchtime and I planned on getting the ferry at about 2 o'clock. But unfortunately, because of low tide, the ferry was cancelled. So I then had to wait four hours to get the next one at, at six o'clock. I finally got over to the Isle of Skye about seven-ish, which didn't give me a lot of time. It was summer when I went, so I did have a fair bit of, of daylight, but I still didn't have that long. So I followed the main road mostly, all the way to Harapul, and I camped out there. I made one big mistake, and it's a mistake that I will not be making again, is that I didn't bring my smidge cream, which is basically a, an insect repellent. The midges at this point were absolutely rife. I've never seen so many midges in my life. Luckily, I did have my midge net, so I put that over my head when I was sleeping. That stopped the midges biting my head. However, they bit me nice. pretty much everywhere else. So that night of camping, albeit it was beautiful, it wasn't the most enjoyable experience. So something I definitely wish I brought and I will bring next time I go. So I got fairly early on the second day and followed the A87 here. Again, absolutely stunning route. And I eventually arrived at this uh, junction here, Slygachen, if that's how it's pronounced. Um, I had a little stop here. I had some breakfast. There was a hotel that was open. And I followed this road pretty much all the way down to this point here and then came off to look at the incredible waterfalls down here. It's called the Fairy Pools. Really stunning landscape again. I definitely recommend going there. It was brutally steep uh, in some places So make sure that you're uh, prepared for that if you do go So I turned around came back to the junction here and then carried on up the A87 Towards Portree and again this road is absolutely stunning and it wasn't as busy as I thought They're quite wide sweeping roads to be honest so you don't find that you're um, constantly being you know closely overtaken by by fast cars and lorries they're quite a lot of space and the drivers were really considerate so it was a really enjoyable road i eventually got into portree in the in the late afternoon had a chill there had a really nice uh, relaxing time I booked in two nights at the portree youth hostel um, it was a really nice hostel actually, really clean, really quiet, really well located. I could walk into the town within literally a minute. So that was fantastic. So day three, I had planned on doing a big loop all the way up to the top of the island here and around, but I had to come back a day early due to sort of personal circumstances. So instead of doing that, I wanted to see some of the scenery up this side. So instead I just sort of came up here. Um, saw what I wanted to see and came back down. Now you'll find the old manor store up here which was when I went completely clear. There was nobody there because it was quite early in the morning. Stunning. You could see for miles and it, it really was truly breathtaking. Definitely go and see that if you can. I also wanted to see the, the falls up here in the cliffs which I managed to see. Um, I didn't get to see some of the other areas like the Fairy Glen but that's one for one for next time. So after staying at the hostel again, my last day was spent cycling back to Armadale. So I basically followed the A road all the way, ended up at Broadford, had another fantastic Scottish breakfast, and then zoomed back down to Armadale to catch the ferry. All in all, it was one of the most breathtaking places I've ever visited. It really was a 10 out of 10. If you want to go and have a bikepacking adventure somewhere in Scotland, I would 100% recommend go to the Isle of Skye. It's, it's stunning. So how can you get there? You can get there by ferry, which is the way I chose. And personally, I think that's the nicest way to go because it's a bit more scenic and you can take your bike on there. It literally cost me three pounds each way. So it, you know, it's absolutely nothing. You can drive over the bridge. There is a bridge onto the island. But again, I personally would recommend the ferry. I think it's uh, the nicest way to do it. Thank you very much for watching my video. Hope you found it useful. Please share with your friends and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you in the next video. I publish one every single month, so stay tuned. Cheers.